Greg's back in for the Concord Food Co-op. How are you? This, the weather, it's like, oh, okay, I'm liking this. I, I like it, but what a change from, I mean, three weeks ago, I think yeah. it was, the humidity was yeah. 100%, and it was 95 degrees, and what a change. This is a nice But it, it just, it, we were talking about it earlier this morning, it's like when we were kids, it was like August, and then boom, fall. All of a sudden, we got that again this year. Yeah, we did. Past and few years, we've had humidity into late September. We're like, seriously, I want to enjoy fall, and then all of a sudden, it's snowing. It's like, what happened to fall? Yeah, it's I kind think, of frightening though. You've got so many chores to do to get ready oh for my God. You know, the I winter. Know, that, I know. See, September is nature's way of going. Hey, stupid! Yeah. <laughs> Remember the stuff you were supposed to be doing this yeah. summer, but you yeah. were taking it yeah, easy. I got it. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, um, you got before we talk to Ms. Julianne. Uh, anything shaken? Oh you? yes, uh, big big month at the uh, the co op. I'll, I'll just start with uh, the rounded up of the register program uh, in August for the right. was for the uh, crisis center of Central New Hampshire. Another new record at the registers, uh, four thousand five hundred was uh, was raised, and that was up almost a thousand. Nice, that's job. beautiful. Yeah. That's um, awesome. This month it's uh, in town Concord. So that that's- do you, do you think it's the the individual charity or or the beneficiary or just people are giving? Uh, both those, plus they have given an incentive to the uh, cashiers to remember to ask if people want to round up. Nice. And, and I think that's, uh, I mean, two individuals almost raised, uh, or uh, uh, their efforts were almost $1,000 each. Wow. Oh, that's great. That's um, awesome. Wow. Just from them saying, wow. hey, would you like to help? Yeah. Right. And so there's, you know, it, it, it's, uh, the, the, the customers will generally say yes, but if they're not asked, then the, then it doesn't happen. Right. So, right. so they just have to remember. So. So that that is that is a part of it, but the so, crisis center is a part of it. And um, are you we know, looking at five thousand this month? Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> it depends we'll, on the co-op consumer. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah it uh, it it we'll we'll see. Um, and they and they are willing to help the the customer the consumers. I think the people at the co-op wonderful. are willing to help. Well, that's, I think what's so nice is for me as a consumer, right? It's really easy because it's not. Did you get new glasses? Uh, I'm just wearing them. No, I don't. no new glasses. Just well, you look wicked smart today. now. I know. Right? I, was just, you know. Looks, I just like particularly wanted to feel smart today, so I wore the glasses. Sometimes, You're always smart. Julianne. You know, people know my face as Miss Julianne around the community, right? right? And right. so, if I want to have like. A don't talk to me day. I wear my glasses around because then people don't recognize me. Okay. Nice. Yeah, don't, nice. Show me. don't talk to me. <laughs> but anyways, I think as a consumer, what I love about this co-op fundraiser is it's not, sometimes it feels burdensome when people are like five, six, seven dollars. And that's like when you go to these places, a lot of like five dollars for this. And it's kind of a right. giant, vague organization you've never heard of or never interacted with. Mm-hmm. But the co-op is doing all local organizations yes. that a lot right. of us work for, yep. know people in, know, like know what their efforts are directly in our community. And then also the fact that you're just rounding up. So sometimes it's 20 cents, sometimes it's 80 cents. Right. Like it's literally it just spare change. Right. Yeah, right. 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 Exactly. It feels really easy to be like, okay, yeah, sure. And, mm-hmm. and, and as you were, um, I think, alluding to, um, Peter, it, it, it's amazing that that 30 cents does cumulati- cumulatively become $4,500, sure. you know? And I, I think know. that's what people say. I had my part in that. Yeah, you know? see, I'm glad mm-hmm. I Didn't your up. parents do that to you? Say, if you put 30 cents in the bank every day, every month, yeah. sooner or later, it's going to be up. They had yeah. better interest rates. Well, I never yeah. did. Yeah, I never did it. I should have <laughs> listened to my parents, but yeah. it's working here. Right. So that's fabulous. So another, another uh, thing that's going on at the co-op is uh, on uh, September 14th, not this Saturday, but the following is our annual member celebration. So uh, mm-hmm. members are able to uh, attend this free of charge. It's at the wonderful Hotel Concord this year. That yep. it, it, They have a conference room area that actually overlooks the co-op. Uh, the co-op provides the food. Our sushi uh, chef is there. So do they walk? Oh. Just walk in? I mean, how's that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. okay. Um, we are asking for RSVPs to make sure we're that just the, so we the have enough for everybody. Is, uh, yeah. So they can go to the website and in 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 sign up for that. Um, and it's that's for the entire household. So membership um, right. includes the entire household. Uh, so that's a, that's a great little uh, event we uh, we have every year. Um, and then, Peter, one of your favorite uh, things is starting off on nine sixteen. Look at your little. What's your? Want me to show you the prop? Here you go. Dun 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 dun. Oh, oh your turkey, turkey box. box. Turkey, turkey box. box. Turkey box. up. <laughs> we we kick off turkey box. Uh, the accumulation period starts on uh, uh, nine sixteen. Wow. Uh, that will be the Monday, and that will go for several months. So every time you shop, every ten dollars you spend, you get a turkey buck and. 
Oh. Every 20 uh, stamps you have, you get $5 off your Thanksgiving turkey, your turkey meal, your pies, your turkey groceries. You have That's a week awesome. to redeem them all the, the week before uh, Thanksgiving. So oh. that program is just kicking off. So big big month at the, uh, the co-op. There's a typo. There no, is no, not. I'm just kidding. I no, knew there no, was. <laughs> Kim, Kim did it, so I knew there was no typo. Now, if I had made I that sign. I knew that would get you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Little testy. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, the voice you heard earlier, she of the Wicked Smart Glasses, uh, Julianne Hartley, back with us, local music uh, therapist and nutritional therapist, and uses music and nutritional therapy to address a variety of conditions, including dementia, developmental disabilities, anxiety, and children who have been affected by the opioid crisis, and she's also the stealer of Vermont. Uh, she recently released a new <laughs> album called Miss Julianne Therapeutic Songs for Kids. For more info, you can go to Miss Julianne, no E, dot com. Hmm. I, want, I still want Vermont. So we're going to be talking about Lyme disease today. Yes, that's why I played Put the Lime in the Coconut. And, and, and Julianne was on probably a month, month and a half ago, yeah. and, mm-hmm. she's, and, and since that time even, um, the complications from her Lyme disease have taken her in all different directions, and, mm. and I... Just can't believe how how complicated uh, you know Lyme disease is, and you know and Julianne had said the last time that diag- diagnosing it and and uh, right up front is one of the most important things, or you end up in the position that she's in. Um, and I just wanted you to talk about the things that you've recently learned and 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 the, and the complications and and it, it, it's it, just it, it kicked back in. Oh man, well it's been kicking back in for a while now. Yes, I've been on and off treatment for a while. So I mean. I was diagnosed 2016. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I did initial six months of treatment. I yeah. just kind of made this miraculous recovery. And then a few months later, I just kind okay. of sunk back hang on, down. Hang on, hang on. The six months of treatment. What yeah. does that What? What does that constitute? Uh, a double antibiotic twice a day. Once a day? Twice a day. Twice, oral, twice a day. An oral double. antibiotic yeah. twice oh, a day. Oh, oh, and, oral, okay. You know, to be fair, the option back then, there was also an option for me to do the PICC line antibiotics, but I didn't take it because at the time I really didn't trust the doctor I was working with. Because mm-hmm. um, the doctor I was working with at the time, it was a different doctor who had diagnosed me, but it was my primary who had said, maybe you should do a PICC line. Right. When I finally went back to him and was like, hey, look, look, I really actually had Lyme disease. Because for years, I had been asking him for a Lyme disease test. And to my face, over and over, he would tell me, yeah. I know sick people, you're not sick. Over and over, and this happens, you know, this happens predominantly to women, actually, in our healthcare system. Really? Women, pretty young women, actually, not that I'm saying I'm beautiful or anything like that, but attractive young women most often get denied care based off their symptoms. For whatever reason, really? it happens from male doctors and female doctors, but yeah. So. Wow. But it was really hard because I was also, I mean, I still hmm. consider myself a pretty agreeable person. So at the time, I didn't really fight Except him too much. Except when you had the glasses on. Except, yeah, I okay. mean, I can I can have a bite now yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of a mess. So by the time I finally got treatment, I had probably had Lyme disease for three or four years. Now, right. Now back up before we go ahead for the people who, for the benefit of those who didn't hear you last month, what were the manifestations? What were what was happening to you? that made you think, I have Lyme disease? Well, so I never got a bullseye rash, which I think is the most important thing to say because a lot of people don't actually get the bullseye rash. So if you think you've read it going, oh, I pulled a tick off, it was there, but there's no bullseye, yeah. Woo, I'm all set. Not true. The, yeah, yeah. And to be fair, I don't know exactly what occurrence I got it on. All I know is that is in 2012, mm-hmm. I had a 104 degree fever that came out of nowhere and just kind of came and went for a couple of weeks. And when I finally saw my doctor, um, I had had this. It came and it went? Yeah, just kind of this like really high fever that just kind of came. My mom was with me at the time and I was just kind of delirious, right? Um, and finally, after I kind of recovered from this and then I was just going in and out of a low grade fever for a couple of weeks, I had this purple bluish circle on my arm right and it wasn't a bullseye it just was like this deep bruisey color Mm -hmm. and the only thing that brought my alarm to it was the fact that my father who had been diagnosed with Lyme disease that summer didn't have a bullseye but he had that same dark purple bruise and I never pulled the tick off I I only noticed this bruise until like a week or two later Hmm. Um, so when I finally asked my doctor then for a Lyme disease test he said it was probably just a virus and then I kind of just slowly went downhill, arthritis getting worse in all my joints, pain getting worse, fatigue getting worse. 
to the point where I hiked the Appalachian Trail, thinking mm-hmm. that maybe I needed a life change. And on the Appalachian Trail, I quickly, I yeah, 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 I quickly yeah. realized that no, I'm actually a pretty happy person because he w- kept insinuating that maybe I was depressed and needed antidepressants. Oh, and God, I was like, "You're a poster child for happy people." Well, exactly. Yeah. And I you know I think I'm also a therapist. So I have a pretty good handle on when my coping skills are working or not working, Correct. right? Yep. And when I need more yep. help. And this was like, "No, please listen to me. I think there's something more going on." But and, but I, but just for a yeah. second, um, I mean. I do. I'm doing work around the house all the time. I get big purple bruises all the time. Yeah, so, right, so I think right. it's important that there must. There's other right. symptoms associated with it than other big. Well, I that's mean, why I'm everyone with a big purple bruise right. isn't yeah. getting to right, a doctor. Right, right. And you know, and at that point, I was getting arthritis. I was getting chronic migraines. How do you get arthritis and, at 22? Or well, whatever. exactly. Like, why didn't that raise any red flags? And I'm not sure if it's just that we live in a culture now where chronic disease is so ubiquitous that Ooh, maybe word. that's no longer a red flag when a 20-something year old has a chronic illness but it should be yeah it should. i think it, we yeah. really should be you know there was no autoimmune testing done then when i had arthritis there was there was nothing done i was really truly ignored well, i want to be very clear from what about i understand that. they'll give you a test and say by the way when the test comes back could be a false yeah, positive right or it could be a, a, a false uh, negative yeah so you may not well then what am i getting for this test if yeah. you're telling me you might not you're not going to get anything right. out of it so I finally got to the point where um, I completely stopped pooping. I'm like, my bowels were paralyzed. Sure, this I could is have after gone the, the whole morning trail. without that image, but okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm. Oh, no. Well, no, I mean, no, to be fair, well, it, 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 it was the okay. stopping of this the pooping. This is live radio. Of the this is, it was a catalyst. Yeah, yeah. This Everyone was a catalyst. Everyone started listening yeah. a little bit more. They were like, what's happening? So I I can't unsee that now. Okay. It's the, it's the stopping of the pooping. There's nothing right. to see. I let it go. Yeah. Okay. So I eventually my bowels were just paralyzed. Like literally my digestive system was paralyzed. And at that point I was recommended to just take Miralax, which didn't, yeah. nothing was working. Right. Like I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. It stopped. Yeah. Right. And I saw a different doctor who immediately was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And you just saw my symptoms. We ran all the tests. I pretty much was just a mess mm-hmm. and had Lyme disease. Um, in which case then we started treatment. Wh- but When did you, do you remember the day? the hour that you finally found out 100% sure you have Lyme disease. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I just cried a lot because it was just like, oh, my gosh, this isn't in my head. I know. And, and you know, and every time they did blood work and all the blood work was bad, right? Like all the autoimmune. I had the highest possible measurement of autoimmune antibodies in my body. Like I capped the machine out. And my doctor, the, the, the new good doctor was just like, oh, mm. Wow, you must have sh- felt really bad, right? Like, Duh. like, like this yeah. Is, yeah. It just it was validation, and because there was That's a while great. where I was really doubting myself, I should have like, made you feel good. Ba- it's a double edged sword. Yeah, bad, yeah. But, but I feel good that yeah. See, I'm not nuts. Yeah, I was right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That validation was really important. So, anyways, now fast forward three or four years of going on and off of antibiotics. Mm-hmm. I finally this summer I got to a point where my visual reaction de- delay. So I have a brain injury from the Lyme disease now because it's just gone on so long, on and off and on and off, flaring up. That I have this brain injury that is increasingly getting worse by the week. Right. So at this point I'm no longer driving. I have my husband drive me in, wow. and my mother will be driving me home after this. I'm out of work now. I had to finally just leave my work because I'm no longer safe enough to be around my clients because sometimes. Um, I have no upper body strength any left. I have oh. uh, a lot of visual issues at the moment, mm-hmm. and I have a lot of problems in my hips and all of my joints. So, I mean, I work with a really vulnerable population. Right. If True. they have a high need or yeah. some incident happens, your like, hips I, need to be working. Yeah. Or my arms. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was right. the upper body. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Like yeah. I can barely, you know, lifting things in and out of the oven. I'm like your 90 year old grandmother mm-hmm. who's probably doing better than me yeah. strength wise at this point. Can this be reversed? Well, the neurologist says, yes, we just need to get the right treatment in. Um, The issue, now that we're about to start the pick line antibiotics, I just want to give an idea of how complicated this is, right? It is, because it's not a black and white. No. Listen, you have this, this, and this, so you have Lyme disease. We're going to hear about how complicated it is on the other side of the break. Okay. Okay. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back. Julianne Hartley is here. Uh, Concord Food Co-op. Greg's in the house, but you're kind of like I am. You're sitting back going, whoa. 
Well, no, it, it's very frightening. And, you know, if, if uh, I'm certainly, I'm very reluctant to go walk in the woods now. You know, I'm, I'm afraid I, to I walk in the woods. But you know what? You don't need to be afraid. You know? I love the woods. I'm I, in the yeah. woods all the time. I still forage. to do all those things. You don't need to be afraid. You just have Forest to check bathing yourself. Is, you know, is the, the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, it's just a matter of checking yourself. And I mean checking everywhere and have mm-hmm. a partner help you check everywhere. Yeah. And then advocating for yourself when you do feel sick. Do not let your doctor just let you walk out of that room without at least testing. Because right? many times they don't know. They just flat out don't know. And like I said, with so much chronic illness out there right now, mm-hmm. one in two people have a chronic disease right now in America. It's probably really hard to decipher like, okay, what's a food allergy here? Or what's a just, you know, maybe a heart condition or what's that? Like I, I give them credit there. But do not let your doctor just let you shrug it off because you should be able to keep walking in the woods. You just should also be able to get treatment right away when you need it. Mm-hmm. And that's the issue for me. I did not get treatment right away. Right, because had you had, you would have been treated early on. So the other issue here is that I was really high in lead. Um, and that's a really important thing. I want it. I want all of Where your listeners. Yeah, so where did it come from, right? Yeah. So I have a, a genetic mutation that's actually quite common where I just, I do detox out heavy metals and pesticides and things a little bit slower than the normal population, meaning it's more easy for me to accumulate. This is her fault. <laughs> and it's not my mother's fault. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's probably epigenetics, meaning it's it's uh, interaction between my environment and its effects on my genetics. It's okay. making them to express themselves in different ways. So okay. we have a lot of pesticides. We have a lot of heavy metals right. in our environment. Okay. Um, add that to like, maybe, maybe it's from my mom or my dad or, you know, the whole line where we're just slightly, we detox us out slightly less. But um, we just tested our, our house water. We had put off the testing for my house water for a while because we had copper pipes. And we figured, well, we can't have lead in a copper pipe. Nay, nay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have lead. We just found out last week Look that- at the solder points. Yes, the <laughs> yeah, solder. I know, I know. Yes, yeah. and it's supposed to be illegal to have lead in your solder. So if you, if you think you have a new house and you're like, we don't have lead, you probably still do. Because uh, it's a lot easier for the welders to use solder, mm-hmm. I mean, to use solder with lead than to use it without. So even though they, you, you have a new house, you shouldn't have any lead in there, you have to check your water. I'm, it's so serious now because they couldn't put in the pick line of the IV antibiotics because my lead levels were too high. I would have killed my uh, liver and kidneys if we had done both oh, at the sure. same time. But, you but, and, but wasn't that a result of that you weren't able to process the lead because of, of the lime? No, no, that no. was not. There was no. It's connection probably there. a separate issue, yeah. uh, or maybe we don't know. Like that's the whole issue here is we don't know enough about Lyme because not enough research is being done, not right. enough money is being put into it. We're doing so much around prevention, but we're not doing enough about how do we actually treat this. And part of it is we have to finally acknowledge that persistent Lyme disease exists. That you can still have Lyme disease after one month of antibiotics. Mm-hmm. And we know this from mammal studies. We know this from a ton of work that John Hopkins is doing. But yet most doctors are still following the CDC dogma that- Which is terrible. It, well, and, and I understand because they need some rules to follow. Right. I get it. But the CDC is like always five to 10 years behind the latest research. And right. there's critical research out there because people like me, I'm 29 years old. I'm out of work. I can't walk 100 yards without my hips freezing up. I'm in chronic excruciating pain all day long. And I can't get the treatment I need because the CDC is five to 10 years behind. Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> it's not my fault. Just not a principle. I guess not a principle. Need... You look good for a train wreck. I, 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 it's amazing. <laughs> we need our lawmakers to Thank make you. laws to protect our yep. Lyme patients. Yep. Thank you. Massachusetts has laws to protect insurance coverage for people with a Lyme disease diagnosis. We do not have that in New Hampshire. Most of my treatment I have to pay for out of pocket. And what's the cost of that now? For the pick line, it's going to be $1,200 a month out of pocket. Oof. For the uh, lead detoxing, it's $800 yep. a month out of and, pocket. And you can pay that easily without a job. Super easily. Yeah. <laughs> Try walking 100 yards and making some money out of it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just ridiculous. It, but, it's, but it's the medication you need. It's or, the medication yeah. I need. And, you know, I'm out of work now. It's like this is... There's before at least I was like maintaining and able to kind of scrape by and mm-hmm. I was able to like push off the you know Okay everybody round up. No, yeah, seriously. Right. No, no, no. Round up for Julia. Yeah, yeah. yeah pay attention. get ready for my GoFundMe, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I don't mean to make light of it and you know that. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, but it's it's wow. Uh, was it you that told me? Uh so who told me that there was a there was a drug to treat Lyme disease. It was a French uh, it wasn't me. Okay. Uh, there was actually a 
drug had been successful in treating Lyme disease, hmm. the patent ran out. And then everyone stopped making it? because it Nobody it. started making it. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's picked it up. Interesting. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Um, and it was a French. It was a French pharmaceutical company, and apparently, in in and the numbers were like sixty percent, seventy percent of the people had responded, were treated well with this thing. Okay, patent ran out. Nobody's picked it up. I'm like, well, Julianne's probably going to research it and be making it at home. Yeah, no, well, I, I'm telling you to look it up. Um, but I mean, honestly, there's no one size fit all for everyone because some people are right, sick with chronic Lyme because they have lead, or some people are sick with chronic Lyme because of a, a whole multitude of issues. If there were one easy answer, we would all be doing it. Right. That's why the doxycycline is just there's not just one easy answer for it because mm-hmm. it doesn't work for everybody. Right. Well, you're, uh, are you reaching out to the politicians? I mean, now's the time to do it. They're all running for something. I mean, Dan wasn't here this morning. What I know, was to do? I know. <laughs> I know. We were no, hoping I mean, Dan really, was going to be here. He's off running for governor. Someone's yeah. welcome. If, if someone knows who I should be talking to, I'd love to talk to that person. Obviously, I'm happy to advocate for it because I've got mm. nothing else to do now. <laughs> and you, you are a powerful advocate. Uh, we're just going to sit there and go, oh, she's mad. Let her talk. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you yeah. Know, and, and that's okay. And, yeah. and so Lyme, is this one type of Lyme or there's different, I mean, they're testing for just one? So there's, yeah, so the Western blot testing is flawed, essentially, because it's only testing for, like, one species. And then you have to be able to make antibodies. Keep in mind, my body no longer right. makes antibodies to bacteria. My body no longer makes antibodies. So I can't pass that test if I'm not making antibodies for that test. Right. There's that's only that's only one species. There are many, many different species of the Lyme bacteria, and right. they have slightly right. different effects on people. Right. And and you all, now to add insult to injury, you also have the Powassan virus, which is separate from Lyme disease, which still comes from ticks. Uh, and There's a lot of co-infections. They don't have any treatment for mm. that one. People have died. Yeah, it, it basically takes on the the uh, look of uh, an encephalitis. Yeah, and I was like, seriously, and nobody's talking about it. I'm like, how can you not talk about this stuff again? New Hampshire, everybody goes outside. Whether you're in the park, your backyard, in the woods, ticks are everywhere. Nobody is saying anything about it. We got it. We've got to keep this up and keep talking. Yeah, and at least keep advocating, right? Everyone, talk to your lawmakers if you can, and let's keep it going. I promise you, when they come in here, I will be pushing. We will. I, yeah, I will do Thank that. Thank you, uh, Greg. Um, you got about ten seconds. Shop yep. co-op get for turkey bucks and uh, there you go. <laughs> Prevent Lyme disease. Up. Yeah. Round up, round up uh, at How the about in town? Start Carpet saving with turkey bucks <laughs> starting September 16th. Every time you spend $10 at the co-op, ooh, you get stamps, turkey. Oh, come on. You know the routine. Yeah. Conquered food. Conquered.